That feeling of getting your first iPod, opening up the App Store, and seeing a list of the most colorful, exciting games you have ever seen in your entire life will never happen again. The earliest mobile games are on another plane of existence compared to the slop you see nowadays. Wee! Wee! Go, 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 go. Quick, quick. Man, this is so much fun. Here we go. But the question is, how much of our enjoyment of these mobile games are based solely on nostalgia? Well, that's what we're about to find out. I've narrowed my list down to the 22 most classic mobile games. Obviously, everything is not here, and if you guys have enough for a sequel to this video, I'd be more than happy to make it. That being said, our list for today is Flappy Bird, Cut the Rope, Doodle Jump, Temple Run, The Room, Subway Surfers, Fruit Ninja, Angry Birds, Jetpack Joyride, Where's My Water, Crossy Road, Candy Crush, Geometry Dash, Plague Inc., Doodle God, Fun Run, Clash of Clans, My Singing Monster, Monument Valley, Hill Climb Racing, Dumb Ways to Die, and Plants vs. Zombies. The last thing I want to note before ranking these is they would probably all be S tier if they are ranked against other mobile games, but we unfortunately have to spread them out amongst 5 tiers, so even if your favorite game is in D tier, just know it is still an amazing game. Now, without further ado, let's find out which mobile games are the most classic, and which ones can go suffocate on some plastic. I can't think of a better game to start with than Flappy Bird. It was like a phenomenon at the time. There wasn't a mobile phone out there that didn't have this game. We had competitions at school. Me and my sister were competing for the best score on a road trip, getting like the 200s back to back. We're playing it today, just to try to get a decent score for the video. I was instantly reminded of its addictive nature. There's something about the combination of the sounds and the feeling of being so close and doing so well just before losing it all. The bright pixel graphics are really nice too. Ultimately though, it is insanely simple compared to every other game here. Obviously the simplicity is why it became so popular, but it's also the reason nobody was playing it a few months after its popularity spike. This is my last warning to all of you that even if I rank something low, it is an amazing game. Got that? Good, because the classic mobile game Flappy Bird is going in C tier. While I have made it very clear that I was a huge Angry Birds fan, there was definitely a time where I was equally as obsessed with Cut the Rope. It's got a similar level structure, with new themes, mechanics, and levels to 3 star in every update. And I've always been a huge puzzle game fan. Combining that with the cute main star Omnom and straightforward level designs, it was a no-brainer that I love these games. I think experiments and time travel were pretty incredible as well, although after that it felt like it lost some of its magic. Cut the rope magic! Mmm, check please! Um, anyways, I'll probably do a whole video on the cut the rope game someday. But let's wrap this section up by saying that I found this game extremely addicting, it is still very enjoyable to this day, and it would be a travesty to put Cut the Rope any lower than S tier. Moving back to a more simple one, we have Doodle Jump. Again, it feels like every kid who first went to the App Store on their new iPod would download this game first. It was huge, and for a pretty similar reason as Flappy Bird. You could pick up and play it when you finish eating lunch or on the bus ride to school. It was addicting to try to beat your old score, but I think this one got pretty old pretty quick as well. For example, did you know there was a Doodle Jump 2? And a Christmas special? And guess what changed? Nothing. There was really no innovating the title. What the first game had was all they had to offer. I also completely forgot that the game required you to tilt your device to move. I guarantee none of these other games did that. Anyways, like I said, it's addicting, it's cute, and definitely well made. But it's not impressive enough to do better than C tier. Wait a second, I have to tilt to move in this game? But I made the Jake Miller certified guarantee that Doodle Jump was the only one. But the fans, they're not going to be happy. I put Angry Birds Epic in B tier one time and my reputation still hasn't recovered. What do you mean they can hear me? There's no fans. <gasps> <coughs> Honestly, I've missed this game. It's like an edgier precursor to Subway Surfers and tons of games have copied this style by now. As a kid, those freaky monkeys chasing me was genuinely pretty scary. Now I can play Flying Gorilla all day and only have to change my diaper a few times. While we're playing this one for the video, I honestly was content after like three runs. I really love the feeling, the music, and honestly the gameplay too, but there isn't enough grabbing me to keep me going. This is one of my least played ones as a kid as well, and I'd imagine it's for the same reason. While it isn't as addicting as Flappy Bird, it is cooler, so I'm gonna say B tier. The Room was a game I hadn't initially thought of when I started this list. Don't get me wrong, this is probably one of my favorite mobile game franchises of all time. I've played all four of the games and have honestly been waiting to see if they make another. Puzzle boxes, and escape rooms in general, are some of my favorite things and a creepy supernatural take on the genre that I can play on the go is amazing. I don't remember if the others cost money originally, but I know this one did for sure. And I remember actually being scared of this one, like I'm talking 5 diapers per play session here. 
but now those aspects just make this a really cool experience. However, like I said, is it all that classic? It's a great game, but it really stands out among the others here. And for that, I will sadly be putting this one in the A tier. Maybe if Tommy Wiseau showed up, I'd be willing to change that. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Again, Subway Surfers is a more bright, kid-friendly kind of game. No diapers required. Well, maybe just one. I think the success of this game is probably due to the constant events, new characters, and upgrades the game has. It feels like there's a lot more to collect and work towards than Temple Run had. I definitely had a phase of playing this one as a kid, just to unlock all the cool characters. But I still got just as bored with it as I did with Temple Run, especially considering it is way slower paced, meaning your runs are longer, but more boring in comparison. I think it was fun playing them back to back like this. So while they each have their pros and cons, I'd say they even out in the end. B tier. Wow, Fruit Ninja is really fun. Again, I wasn't that into this game as a kid. All you were doing was slicing fruit, why wouldn't I just play Angry Birds instead? But it is so satisfying to just cut up these fruits and get a combo going. And they've added a lot over time, you could spend your whole day on this game. I'm pretty pissed you die instantly for getting hit by a bomb. It is pretty deserved though. I still think I get bored with this one pretty quick, but I enjoyed it enough to put it in A. Definitely replay this one if it's been a while. I already have two videos on the Angry Birds series, so I won't bore you with the details. There's something so satisfying about launching these birds at these structures and using every bird's ability to get the best score possible. If you want to hear more about my thoughts on the games and the birds, check out the card on screen. This one's an S tier. Out of all the endless runners out there, I for sure played Jetpack Joyride the most. I wish I had my old iPod still. I had a crazy amount of vehicles and upgrades, and not to mention an impressive high score. And to nobody's surprise, it's still amazing. I also noticed it's made by Halfbrick, who also made Fruit Ninja. I don't see them making too much nowadays, which is sad. Anyways, the concept alone should tell you how incredible the game is. Stealing a Gatling gun jetpack from a top secret lab and picking up coins and upgrades on the way. I'm honestly tempted to keep this one on my phone, it's pretty amazing. S tier. I had planned on making a Disney Mobile Games tier list, let me know if I should still do it. And at the top of the list, of course, was Where's My Water. It's pretty similar to Cut the Rope, so it should be no surprise that I love this one as well. There was also Where's My Perry and Where's My Mickey, and I love those too. However, I'm not completely in love with the idea. Removing the dirt incorrectly, even just a little, can mess up your whole game plan. It's a bit more stressful than something like Cut the Rope. It is so close to S tier, but I'm going to just have to say A. Here's another game I played obsessively on my channel. Not only is it an endless game, but there are secret characters? Sign me up. Especially when Disney Crossy Road released, that was like the best of both worlds for me. I will always love Crossy Road, and for that reason, it has to be S tier. Patrick, if you hadn't mentioned Candy Crush, it would not have been on this list. Nobody was going to bring it up. Yet it's hard to deny how massive this game was. So what's the deal? In my eyes, this game sort of tarnished mobile games forever. Games seem to have gotten a lot more scummy and filled with in-app purchases since its release. I have to imagine it had some sort of part in that. And I can't lie, it is addicting. Like I said, I love puzzle games, but there's still a feeling of lifelessness here that the other games have surpassed. Personality is a big part of why I like the games that I like. And Candy Crush really has none. GAMERS! Let's rise up and put this sad excuse for a classic mobile game in D tier where it belongs. I have tons of fond memories with Geometry Dash. An embarrassing one I'll share is when it was first really big. I downloaded it and was sitting near my crush at the time. I wanted her to know I play this cool game, so I purposely left the sound on and said oops when it played out loud. After that we made out and got married and had seven kids and three dogs and four houses and it was all thanks to Geometry Dash. If you aren't familiar, it's a mix between a rhythm game and a platformer. Your moves go along to the beat and the songs are so dang good that you want to beat the level just to hear it all. This game is addicting in a lot of ways. Slowly getting better at a level until you eventually beat it is just the coolest feeling in the world. Hearing the bass drop on big moments or the satisfying end to the song as you finish the stage they're all amazing. There is a point where I can't beat the dang levels anymore, but I still appreciate them a lot. I wasn't initially thinking this was top tier, but I gotta be honest, this is one of the easiest S's of my career. In middle school, we were only allowed to download a couple of games on our school-issued iPads. And you know which one was good enough? Plague Inc., the game where your goal is to kill the entire planet with a deadly disease. Thanks, education system. Very cool. No, I mean it. This game is awesome. There's something about spreading your virus as fast as possible that is very fun. Since this was basically the only game I had, I played it a lot. I mostly just started my disease in Greenland and didn't make any symptoms until every person was infected. Then you just wipe everyone out in 5 seconds. It's awesome. 
In the end, it isn't as addicting as my top picks, but I gotta say, this is a pretty fun one. You might not have heard it before. Give me an A! A! a. Give me another A! A! Give me... Why not one more A? Oh, come on, guys. Just one more? No! I had tons of requests for Pocket God, so I apologize that I chose the other God game to rank today. If we do a part two, then that one's at the top of my list. Don't worry. Today's God-themed game is none other than Doodle God. The premise is pretty simple. You start with a few elements and combine them together to make new ones. I'm not sure what I like about this one, really. It's just fun. I do think it was more appealing when I was a kid, though, but I still like it. I'm gonna say B tier. So, Don Ali, you said my list would be invalid without Fun Run. I'm willing to rise to the challenge then, lay it on me. Let's take one nice, long look at the necessary inclusion that is Fun Run. Impressed? I will say, this is Fun Run 3. Looks like the original got taken down at some point. And I did indeed play this as a kid. Was it ever good? Nope. Is it classic? Not really. But this list would be invalid without it. So let's add this puppy to the list. Happy now, Don! Also, sorry, Don. This is a joke. I still love you. Sorry for being mean. I thought it might be funny, and then it wasn't. Um, um. I was never much of a cock person myself. Justin, however, my friend who's in my tier list sometimes, he's a cock kind of person. Clash of Clans is a town builder where you fight other towns to get resources and make yourself stronger. I only ever liked town builders if they were tied to an IP I like, such as The Simpsons Tapped Out. So in my opinion, this would be D tier, but I understand people love this game. I'll go halfway and say B. If you don't like that, just remember, it could be in D right now. I played this game for a little bit, as you can see from my gameplay here. I was more of a My Singing Muppets kind of guy, personally. This is so close to being something I could enjoy. If the breeding process was more straightforward like Doodle God, I would have adored this game. But there is way too much chance and in-app purchases for me to like it too much. It's crazy that it's like a midpoint between Clash of Clans, Geometry Dash, and Doodle God. I guess Geometry Dash is a stretch. I mostly say that because I like the music in the game a lot. Building a choir to make a full song is a really fun idea, but I don't personally think it's better than a B tier. This is another one I don't really think about when discussing classic mobile games. Monument Valley won a ton of awards, it's probably the most beautiful game here. And when I think of big indie mobile games, this is definitely one of the strongest. The mind-bending puzzles continue to be unique to this day, it's a unique experience that you're not going to get anywhere else. Even the characters and story are super strong. I had absolutely no plans to give this one S tier before I played it again. This is one of the coolest games that has ever released on the App Store. It feels wrong just to consider putting it lower than S tier, so I won't. Another game I played way too much of as a kid. Hill Climb Racing is all about driving across the terrain until your car gives out on you. Make some upgrades and go for a new high score. It's pretty simple, yet pretty addicting at the same time. It was way more cool as a kid, but I didn't mind playing it today. I'll say B tier again. Dumb Ways to Die was not going to be on this list, but I was downloading all the games to play, it showed up, and I thought, you know what? Why not? Let's add another game into the mix. What's funny is I didn't play the game so much as I just played and replayed and replayed the music video. Why is the song so good? Set fire to your hair Poke a stick at a grizzly bear Eating medicine that's out of date Use your private parts as piranha bait Dumb way Okay, enough of that. We're here to talk about the game, not the song. It's a WarioWare clone, essentially. Just complete the task and try not to die. It's okay, the song is way better though. I think I'm gonna go down to D tier, just because it's kinda depressing how bad it is compared to the music video. Sorry guys, guess I should've not included this one. I saved the best for last, as usual. This list would be invalid without this one. Sorry Don Ali, God, I'm so sorry, oh my God. Plants vs Zombies has so much content and all of it is good. It is the best tower defense game ever made. There is so much personality in the plants and zombies, plus the level structure and new mechanics constantly being introduced alongside new zombies to fight. I don't even know why I'm trying to sell this to you guys. You all know this game is S tier. I just wanted to say I've wanted to make a video on the PVC series for a while, so if you would want to see that, let me know. It'd be a ton of fun because the games are crazy. Almost as crazy as Dave himself. So that's the list. It's hard to tell if my biases are going to be common amongst you guys or if I'm way out of line or something. I'd love to hear your top picks. While making this list, the one thing that all these games had in common were the awesome memories I have with each of them. 
like playing the new Angry Birds and Cut the Rope games, getting car sick while trying to play through the room, or playing Geometry Dash with my friends on a field trip while also religiously watching DUMB WAYS TO DIE SO MANY DUMB WAYS TO DIE What I'm trying to say is, regardless of what I think, each of you have your own fond memories of your favorite mobile games. Even the unpleasant ones can be fun to think about now. And yeah, maybe you went through six diapies trying to play Temple Run. Or maybe your crush laughed at you and you thought it was cool to play Geometry Dash. Maybe your sister got a better high score than you and Floppy Bird. <sighs> Even through all of that, these games will always be special to me in their own unique, traumatizing ways. Thank you for watching. I will see you soon. Goodbye. Dumb ways to die. So many dumb ways, so many dumb ways to die. Yeah. No, 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 no. No! <laughs> no! Well, I don't know if you heard that, but it's ready to eat, so <laughs> we gotta wrap this up. <laughs>